when the stock market is down and make sure that you buy the dip or at least that's what the popular narrative is amongst the investing community of today. And don't get me wrong, it seemed like a sensible thing to do when we were in a euphoric bull run and stock market valuations were getting higher by the week, which was the story of 2021. In fact, the biggest dip that the S&P 500 actually experienced in 2021 was back in September, which was less than 5%. So buying the dip, of course, was a winning strategy. But what about now? Because times in the market are certainly different. We're deep into a stock market correction and we're certainly on the cusp of a bear market. So the question still stands, should we still buy the dip? Well, I think there are a couple of questions that us as investors should indeed be asking ourselves before we decide to go all in. Under what criteria are we buying the dip? Is it simply due to the fact that stock market prices are lower today than they were last week and therefore warranting a discount? Or is it based on a broader investment thesis which suggests that the future value of your stock of choice should be higher in years to come? Because price and valuations are two completely different things. Because price doesn't always reflect true value, let alone fair value. And instead, the price of a stock is just the reflection of the total market's perceived value of it. And when Jerome Powell was cranking that money printer and money was flowing in its abundance, it's absolutely no wonder why we saw euphoric perceived value in the stock market. After all, investors were happy, feeling very confident, perhaps even invincible, with the total value of their portfolios going up every single week. And practically every investment was a good one up until now. And it's gone. With high levels of inflation, interest rates on the rise, a global recession on the cards, the perceived value of the stock market along with investor confidence has absolutely fell through the floor. Stocks that you may once thought were great investments now might not look all so appealing, or perhaps they do depending on which way you look at it. But today I wanted to dig into the false perception of value in a little bit more detail. Because whilst now may feel like a buying the dip opportunity, an opportunity to buy when there's blood on the streets and an opportunity to get a discount on your favorite stocks, the reality is some of these stocks may never ever recover. And as a result, buying the dip on a wrong investment choice will only compound your losses over time, inevitably leaving you with nothing. And I certainly don't want that to happen to any of you guys, so let me explain in a little bit more detail. In 2021, we had similar stock market valuations that we saw back in the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s. By looking at the inflationary adjusted price to earnings ratio, we can see that prices in the dot-com bubble were only actually about 10% higher relative to that of the earnings at the time. And I probably don't need to explain myself in a great level of detail here, but when we see euphoric market conditions, we invariably see a crash not long thereafter. It's certainly what happened in the dot-com bubble when that eventually burst and the market went on to crash about 50%. And look, whilst in the moment, it's certainly shit for us as investors, but it certainly isn't something that I would fear. Because bear markets are just part and parcel of being an investor, especially when you're investing for the long term. You'll of course go through periods of peaks and troughs, and that's just the way the mechanics work in the stock market. But with that level of periodic volatility, it certainly leaves companies exposed and therefore investors like me and you exposed if we don't invest in the right stocks. Let me take you guys back to the dot-com bubble when valuations were extremely high. At the time, the most valuable company on the planet was a company called Cisco Systems. The company is still around today, but is nowhere near what it was back in the 2000s. At the time, it was a promising tech company that was absolutely rallying in value throughout the course of the 1990s. The stock ended up rising 1,307% within about two and a half years from being just $5 per share to a peak market price of $77 per share. This gave the stock at the time a total value of $554 billion, which adjusted for inflation in today's money would be the equivalent to just over $1 trillion. If they had that market cap today, they'd be the fifth biggest company on the planet just behind that of Amazon and just above that of Tesla. However, unfortunately for Cisco Systems and all of their shareholders, this success story came to an abrupt end. Cisco stock went on to lose 85% of its market value within two years. And even now, 22 years later, the stock is still worth 37% less 
than what it was at its peak market value in the early 2000s. Now, the reason why I tell this story is because I fear that many of the stocks that were pumped in 2020 and 2021 may see the same fate. Unfortunately, when company valuations are astronomically high, it leaves them very much exposed with a long way to fall back down to earth. And the companies that have weak balance sheets and just broadly speaking, weak financials, are the ones that get the most exposed and the ones that suffer the most over the course of the long term. And that's even if they're even around for the long term. Because fundamentally for a stock to continue to aggressively grow and certainly sustain an inflated market price, it requires that company to certainly generate a high level of capital investment. And one way to raise that capital, of course, is to sell shares to people like me and you. However, when market participants no longer see value in that company as the market value of the company falls and they decide to then on to sell their shares back to the market, then the capital valuation for that business plummets. And as a result, companies can find themselves in a position pretty quickly on occasion where they can no longer financially sustain their operations. Some of those companies even leading to bankruptcy. Like we saw with companies during the dot-com bubble like Pets.com, whose stock price crashed from $14 per share to just 22 cents per share before going bankrupt. Or a company like eToys who had a share price of $84.25 per share, but then within 16 months was absolutely worthless. Or even at the time, Google's previous competitor, Ask Jeeves, who had a share price of $190 per share, before dropping to just 86 cents per share within three years. There are an endless number of companies that had so much perceived value from investors that they probably just lost sight of what true and fair value in the stock market actually is. And unfortunately for those investors in the dot-com bubble, everything came crashing down. It really wouldn't have mattered how many times you decided to buy the dip on a discounted stock, you would have ended up with nothing anyway. And let me reiterate, I'm not talking about the kind of companies like the blue chip chip stocks of the world like Apple, Microsoft or Amazon. I'm talking about the companies that are financially vulnerable with high stock valuations that could be very much exposed when shit hits the fan in the stock market. Which I think brings me back to some important investing principles, let's say, that you should probably look at and try and understand in order to place the actual true value on the business that you're looking to invest in. Firstly, and I guess linking back to what I said at the start of the video, price doesn't always define value. So looking beyond the price of the stock and the future upside is certainly extremely important. And one way that you can do this is to do some due diligence and some analysis on the company which you plan on investing into. Take a look at their executive team, take a look at their business model, take a look at how they run their business. Get an understanding of where the business is going in the future. Future. Then ask yourself whether that aligns to your expectations and whether you as an investor in that business are certainly on the same wavelength and where you think the future potential lies. Then on top of that qualitative analysis, then you're going to want to go one step deeper and start to do some quantitative analysis on the stock. Start to look at company financials and start with the basics. Simply look at whether the company is a profitable business or not. Is it actually providing some kind of return to their shareholders? Take a look at whether that company is growing its profits over time or whether the profits are declining. Then ask yourself the same kind of questions when you're looking at the company's revenue. Because you can tell a lot from a business simply by looking at their top line revenue and their bottom line profits. Almost straight away, you can look at any business and see the trajectory of it if you just look at three or four years worth of data. Be sure to also check out things like the company's balance sheet too. You're gonna wanna look at things like their debt levels, especially in the environment now where interest rates are going up. You're also gonna wanna take a look at how balanced they are between the company's assets and the company's liabilities. Start to take a look at some of the common valuation metrics like a price to earnings ratio, a price to sales ratio, a price to book ratio, and a current ratio. And if you want to go one step deeper, start to do a little bit of competitor analysis as well. How do their competitors and their valuations of their competitors stack up against the stock which you plan on investing into? And once you've gathered all of that information and have a well thought out investment thesis, you should certainly feel a hell of a lot more confident about the investment which you're about to make. I think if you're able to do that successfully, it prevents you making any kind of emotional mistakes and perhaps investing into the wrong companies. Because the reality is some companies simply won't come back from this stock market correction and the stock market potential crash 
that we're about to see. You only really have to look at the dot com bubble crashing as well as just broader market cycles just to realize that history always repeats itself. So don't be that guy or girl who's just blindly buying the dip on an underanalyzed stock in the hope that it goes on to recover at some point in the future. Because as we know, that's not always the case. So there's certainly my two cents guys, be sure to let me know yours down in the comment section below. But before you go, if you do want to see how much I personally believe the stock market will crash by, then be sure to click on this video here. And with that being said, I'll see you over in the next one.